Thank you guys very much for joining us uh, for the Comedy Festival. Like you heard, my name is Eric Conus, uh, and I know I'm really tall, um, <laughs> and uh, I've got a really long last name. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> nice to be here. Um, before I start the show, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I got caught up. I, I was distracted on my drive over here. Have you guys seen those? Um, those, those operating while intoxicated enforcement area signs that they have out on the road. You can't miss them. They're, they're right in the middle of the lane. Um, which I think is like the first test. Like, if you hit that, you know, <laughs> you're, you're going to be enforced. Um, <laughs> but, but the thing about it is, it's like it's instantly recognizable. You know exactly what it says. Operating while intoxicated enforcement area. You know it instantly. Unless you're intoxicated. <laughs> in, in which case it just reads owl enforcement area. <laughs> which I guess serves the same purpose. Like, I don't want to go down that road. That's not, you know, so I mean, you know, I mean, drink up everybody, but just look out. There's a bunch of drunk owls on the road. <laughs> uh, happy 2013, everybody. This is the eighth year of the Comedy Festival. We made it! The apocalypse ain't on nothing on us, everybody, right? What do you got to say now, History Channel? What do you got to say? <laughs> oh my goodness. I, um, actually, this is an interesting fact. I, I learned this. Um, 2013 marks the beginning of uh, the maternal age. You guys heard that? Yeah. Yes? You know what that means? Um, no? <laughs> but essentially, what it means is uh, that uh, ladies, from now on, you are going to be in charge of everything. Yeah, that's right. I know. I know what you're thinking. What's the difference from now? Um, well, first off, there's going to be no more war. Yeah, just a bunch of catty back talking to the UN. Nobody talks to Sarah yet. She's being a total batch. I know she's so broke, she's taking it in the butt now. Ah. <laughs> 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 Alright, enough of the politics, everybody. Let's have some fun. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I know a bunch of old people that don't like a lot of black people that I've seen. A lot of black people working in retirement homes. <laughs> Relax, everybody. It's just an observation. That's what this is for, is for laughing at the little things in life, everybody. I truly believe that. I think that we need to be able to laugh at the little things in life. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, like, I love sitting outside and just watching like the moths fly around the porch light and just laugh at the stupid things, you know, just like, stupid moths, they're so stupid. They're fascinated by some glowing object that they'll never understand, they're just flying around, it doesn't care about them, they'll never know how it works, right? Stupid moths. <laughs> then I go upstairs and I watch television until I pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Let the news just permeate my dreamscape. That's a fun way to spend it. It's been an interesting year for the news, everybody. It's been a lot of interesting things. Al Roker pooped his pants in the White House this year. That's how it started for me, everybody. That's a thing. That happens. That actually happened. Al Roker pooped his pants <laughs> in the White House. And what's crazy about it is, like, he wrote a book about the experience. He went on television. He told everybody, like anyone else, a anyone here. Yeah. Right? If you pooped your pants in the White House, you would like to keep that shit to yourself, you know? Like, <laughs> not out. I want to run on something. He's like, oh, I was just walking through the hallway one day and I felt a little high pressure system moving through. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was all the extra came out. <laughs> if you pooped your pants out, I, I shunk it. Thank you. <laughs> 
Charted. Yeah, Charted. It is now part of the national conversation. <laughs> so now we're over. And it's like, yeah, I just had to go to the bathroom, throw the underwear out, go meet the president. Like, and then he said this. He literally said this. Luckily, I was by myself, so nobody knew that it happened. Like, you're on TV. <laughs> Seriously? And you're in the White House, Al. You don't think, like, they are listening to everybody's phone conversations from anywhere. You don't think they've had cameras in the bathroom since the Kennedy administration? Are you kidding me? As soon as that underwear dropped from his hand, there was some Secret Service agent on the phone like, Mr. President, we have a possible bomb hazard in the North bathroom. Do not shake Al Roper's hand. Do not shake my hand. <laughs> Check in, everybody. Check in. Make sure you have Foursquare, Facebook, and all your friends on the internet know that you are here and at home with your valuables. You could be mayor of this place. That's such a stupid thing, isn't it? Like, but that's how we actually got our mayors. <laughs> Like, hey, dude, how did you get put in charge of this entire city? Well, I just kept showing up here every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, politics isn't funny, everybody. Just everything's moving so fast. Everything, um, we're always trying to like advance things. You guys ever go to a gas station? A round of applause, who's been to a gas station? <laughs> It used to just be gas. You could just now you can get anything at a gas. You can get alcohol. You can get mixers. You can get uh, energy drinks, boner pills, and and, 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 and and like a pewter dragon holding a crystal dream catcher. And, <laughs> and then and gas, and you can still get gas because you should go drive around after you get all that stuff. But, and everything has a flashlight. Which, like, that's the epitome of our technological advancement, everybody. Just, like, just put a flashlight on it. Is that a can opener? Put a flashlight on it. Why would you need to open a can in the dark middle of the blue one there? It's technology. I saw this. I saw they had, they had, at the gas station I was just at, they had a lighter with a flashlight. <laughs> You can make fire. What do you need a flashlight for? Everything is a flashlight. <laughs> we can burn it. Um, not that I promote that kind of thing. I just wanted to say that. Um, I uh, well, because I, I had to try to be responsible. I'm a science teacher by day, everybody. Yes, that's right. I don't just do this. I, I, I actually uh, I teach uh, uh, K through six, so I'm in charge of shaping the minds of all of your little A D D H D T E M I uh, peanut allergy having. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, but here, here's the thing: I teach in uh, in parochial schools, and and this is really interesting. Um, if, if you teach. In, in, uh, in a Catholic school, you are required now to take a, um, a pedophile class. <laughs> I should rephrase that. You, need, uh, <laughs> you, you have to take a class on how to recognize a pedophile, but that's better, right? It's not like, oh no, guys, here's what you need. It's not like, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I don't even be. It's just, and when I say class, it's just you watching a video on like an interview of all these different predators and they're talking about what they did and how they did it and then all the victims talking about what happened and how they did it and you just leave feeling awful. Like it's just the worst feeling in the world. And like, is that classic Catholic move of like, we're going to make you feel guilty for something you've never done just to make sure you never do it. <laughs> <laughs> And you just, you walk out of there, it's insane. Like literally, this is the weirdest part. You leave that class, 
everybody looks like a pedophile. <laughs> Like, no, Sally, you're not, no, I know that looks like your mom, but I don't trust the van that she's blowing up in. <laughs> hey, anybody else here get a little grossed out whenever you hear a female rapper saying, oh, check my flow? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was never cool. I don't know anything about the popular culture. Back when I was a kid, I thought that You Can't Touch This was performed by the rapper known as Mick Hammer, the Irish leprechaun rapper. Like, <laughs> you can't touch this. Toy, 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 toy. Like that. Like that was like, <laughs> Such a stupid idea. <laughs> I don't have all the answers, everybody, I don't. Um, but I've gotten a lot of advice. Uh, I'm 33 years old now, it's the oldest I've ever been. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. You should applaud for that. It's not a big It's not a big number, it doesn't matter. 33 is not an important age. And you know how I know? Because I, this is why. Nobody broke anything on my Facebook page on my birthday. Aww. 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 Right? <laughs> Like, not a, I like the fact that you were born, like that would have been nice, you know, or just like a, I would have been happy with the abbreviated Happy B Day, which my stupid look on Phonics Brain always reads as Happy Bidet. <laughs> um, but I have gotten a lot of uh, great advice. My dad gave me some great advice uh, many times throughout my life, and I just finally recognized it uh, as the joke that it is. He would always say this, Eric, remember, no matter how smart you think you are, there's always somebody out there who's smarter than you. And he would always say that like after he fixed some problem in my life that I caused. Like, like Eric, remember, there's always someone smarter than you. It's me. And, uh, <laughs> And, and like the older I get, though, the more I realize that's universal. Like that's true for everybody. Like, like Einstein was a genius, and then Stephen Hawking came along, and he was even smarter. And then some other physicists showed up who could walk, and he was even smarter. <laughs> kind of embrace, like especially when you're just having one of those days where you just feel like so stupid, like all, like you just have one of like, you know that feeling you get when you're like just standing in a room and you can't remember why you're in that room? Yeah, yeah. yeah all the time. And so then you think to yourself like, well, I'm just going to go back to where I was <laughs> and I'll just rethink whatever I was thinking that made me come in. And so then you go into the other room and you can't remember why you're in that room. <laughs> And so then you think, well, I'll just go back to where I was. And, and I did that for like an hour and a half one day. Just back and until I realized, I'm like, oh yeah, I was looking for my phone. It's in my pocket. I'm so stupid. Like it was just those days. And um, I got this call from a friend. He's like, dude, you got to come over to this party. And there's like a lot of people over here. Which I just want to stop there. That's a weird measurement. <laughs> You know, like, oh, what kind of, uh, whose butt do you use? Because you're a buttload of people. Is that a metric buttload? What, what, kind of, what kind of a party would that be? Like, would that be like, if you all, sounds like you all cramped and sticky. I don't want to go to a buttload party. That sounds like a Better stay home. Um, but I went. I went to this party. And, and, <laughs> It was, it, was, it, was in the it was in the winter time, and everybody was kind of hanging outside, and they had tiki torches up for the smokers so we could stay warm, which was really nice. And I was standing out there, and uh, one of my friends walked over, and he had a cigarette in his mouth. And he was kind of patting his pockets, and he was looking at me, and I knew exactly what he was thinking. And then he said, he's like, hey, dude, do you have a lighter for matches? Because I don't have a lighter for matches. And he just, like, panicked. And I just stared at him. Cause there was literally a ball of fire, like a foot away from his face. Yeah, and I'm just like, I, um, nope, I didn't use that. I, uh, 
I, I use that, and he just, it took him a second to process what I was just doing, and he finally followed my finger. <laughs> and he looked at the fire. And then he looked back at me, and he's like, oh my god, dude. You're a genius. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm just mildly aware of my surroundings. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it brings up a good point, and that's the, the inverse of that equation that my dad told me. And that is, if, if, if you ever have a day where you just feel like the stupidest person in the world, just wait around a couple of minutes. <laughs> You're going to meet somebody that makes you feel like a total genius. And that is a really good thing.